Okay, so let me just uh, paste it here. So this is a um, kind of working model of a motor, and, and you you saw it work, and it's a model in that you know it's not it doesn't have a so it, a practical useful motor would have more parts. It'll have more magnets spaced out and coil uh, spaced out in such a way to smooth out in uh, how often the 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 current carrying loop will feel the magnetic force. So that's what practical motors would look like. This uh, model of a motor is much more simplified so, so that it's easier for us to see the working, um, working components of this motor. So let me make this smaller because I want to grab, uh, let me grab just one other screenshot because um, there are basically two orientation of this loop that's worth considering as we look at the operation of this motor. So these two snapshots are illustrating two orientations of the, the current carrying coil. Let me talk. Let me talk through the the operation of this uh, model of a motor, and I guess for the purpose of this illustration, I'm going to assume that the top of the magnet is north end. Uh, I don't know if it is. It might not be, <laughs> but I'll, I'll just assume that it's a north end, so that I have some way to uh, draw a magnetic field in a way that makes sense um, in some way. And even though in the real physical picture, I have a, only this tiny small magnet. So my mag actual magnetic field looks more like this kind of a dipole magnet. That's what my real magnetic field looks like. But for the purpose of discussion, let me say that let's just suppose that we have a region of uniform-ish magnetic field that uh, over the entire uh, current carrying uh, coil. It, uh, again, this is not quite realistic. It's not, or that's not how the actual physical demo is set up. But for the purpose of talking about what's happening with a motor, all we need is a uniform magnetic field. We don't need that it be a, a dipole field or that it has some uh, spatially bearing component. Nothing like that is necessary. So I'll just to describe a uniform magnetic field, the simplest uh, setup that we need for this motor to work. So, um, so in the simplest uh, illustration, we can model the current as a single loop of uh, current. So uh, the way it, it, the actual physical demo is built, it has multiple loops, but that's so that there's a greater magnetic force. It's, we are going to be talking mostly about direction. So we can just to say, uh, I think the, this is the positive end. So, oh wait. <laughs> I want to be careful with the direction. You know, let me do this. I'm just going to draw a direction of current. And if it turns out that I messed up, assuming that this end is north, I'll just uh, uh, reverse it. Uh, so, um, so looking at here, I have, let's say, I have current coming in uh, from here. And let's just say current is flowing this way. And it makes some loop and then eventually goes out this way. So that's the direction of current. And let's assume some similar direction here. Current comes in. And I'm going to say on this end, it's going into the page. So it goes around, around, around. Then here it comes out of page and then uh, goes this way. Okay. So the direction of current here would be flowing that way, this way. And the far side is flowing that way, near side is flowing this way. Okay, so that's the arrangement for this motor. And what a motor is a torque exerted on a current carrying wire by magnetic field. That's really all that's necessary for the operation of motor. So, so we can quickly analyze what kind of torque is exerted on this current carrying loop. By the um, by, this magnetic field. Uh, let me draw a uh, copy an illustration of that here. So I have a coil. Um, 
without uh, I'm gonna imagine a more rectangular kind of coil uh, with a segment that's going into the page and a far segment that's uh, flowing left to right a near segment that's uh, flowing out of the page and then uh, or the segment that's coming towards us uh, or towards us <laughs> and a segment that's going from right to left and then the loop goes however many times and then current eventually goes up. So this is a, uh, one current carrying loop that's a version that's there. So when we have magnetic field in the region, so we can do the right hand rule to figure out the direction of force on each of the segments of this wire. So let's do that. So the first segment I'll consider is where current is flowing into the screen, into the page. And I want you so that magnetic uh, L cross, so I'm using this expression that you have seen before, that magnetic force on a current carrying wire is current times L cross B. So a direction of L is into the screen, and I want my hand to be oriented so that when I curl my fingers, they can curl you know, up towards the magnetic field. <laughs> so my force is a uh, right word uh, for this segment of wire. So I have a right word force here. Okay, let me just double check from my perspective. <laughs> okay, um, and the segment that's uh, farther away from us with the current flowing from left to right. So left to right uh, cross B, so um, left, no, that's right to left, <laughs> left to right, <laughs> uh, cross B. Okay, so th there are magnetic forces coming out of the page. So let me just do that and just double check that. <laughs> um, and here with the L coming out of the screen, uh, L cross B. Okay, so the force is to the left. That's the direction. I think I can kind of guess this one. It's probably going to be this. Let's just double check. Uh, current is flowing from right to left, cross B. And yeah, magnetic force is pointing into the screen. Okay, so those are the direction of the force. And as you look at that, um, and as you look at that horizontally lying uh, loop, if you are figuring, hmm, it looks like I'll have the net torque is zero, then you'll be right. Uh, these forces around this center of rotation, um, they, these forces have no lever arm. These two forces were never going to cause any torque. And these two forces, uh, if this loop is a horizontal, then the lever arm for these two forces are zero. They're just uh, stretching the loop out this way. Stretching? No, they are compressing. <laughs> they're just compressing the loop in this way, but, uh, but they, are not, um, they are not causing it to rotate. So this is one of the things to watch out with a motor. A uh, motor of this kind of design has dead zones. There are orientations of the current carrying coil that um, that won't produce any torque. And um, now with the more practical motors, there are things that people do so that motor won't get stuck in a dead zone. But with the world's simplest motor, yeah, that can happen. Can get stuck in a dead zone. So let's analyze the other orientation to see uh, See what it does. So for the other orientation, we have current coming in. And um, on the left side of the coil, we'll have current that's flowing upward, I think. Yeah, upward. And then on the top segment of the wire, current flowing to the right. And I, you know, I know it's a circle. I'm just going to draw this square so that I can talk about the four sides with the four orientations. Um, and the current flows down here and then current flows right to left to here. And then after some number of loops, it leaves. Okay, so, uh, so let's do the same analysis. We are figuring, okay, magnetic force is IL cross B. So for the, and I'm figuring the, the direction of the force on each segment of wire or each kind of orientation of wire on this circular thing. So 
for IL cross B for the left segment, I have, uh, so my current is flowing upward. And I want to bend my fingers in such a way that it can bend towards magnetic field. And I see that I can't do that. Magnetic field is also pointing upward. So around here, the uh, on this segment, magnetic force will be zero in this orientation. Okay, let's keep going. At the top, where the current flows from uh, left to right, uh, so I want it so that IL cross B, okay, magnetic force is pointing out of the uh, screen. Let me just make sure that looks correct from my perspective. Okay, um, okay. Um, on the right segment, I think the same thing is going to happen because for this segment, the magnetic field is anti-parallel and 180 degrees sign of that is also zero. So magnetic force here is a zero as well. Um, okay. At the bottom, uh, I have a current flowing from right to left and magnetic um, field. So this is IL cross B, thumb is pointing into the screen. So magnetic forces into the screen there. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so these two look promising because they do now have lever arm. This is lever arm and this is lever arm. So if you imagine this, um, these two combined forces will tend to rotate this whole thing in uh, kind of this way. So if you imagine that, imagine looking at this coil from a point of the observer who's over here, then from this observer, it'll, uh, that observer, it'll look like it's a spinning counterclockwise, I think. Yeah, so, so there, uh, from this observer's per perspective, net torque is counterclockwise. So th that's the torque on the loop of wire. So, um, so applied over some amount of time that will cause the loop to rotate. And that's exactly what you see with this world's simplest motor. Um, now, <laughs> I don't remember in the demo if it actually spun in this direction or not. If it actually went the other way, <laughs> what it would mean is one or the other, which is um, it could be that the current was actually flowing the other way. I, I don't know. I didn't quite, I couldn't track the direction of wire in this, um, uh, in this uh, screenshot. <laughs> or it could mean that the direction of magnet is opposite. Just flipping either of them will flip the direction with which motor um, runs. And in terms of the practical uh, orientation, practical, uh, Lee, how this demo works, uh, it would depend the direction in which it spins. It would also depend. Wait, would it depend on? It it does depend on which side of this straight wire is stripped because I'm supposed to strip only one side. So um, when it's uh, when the whole loop is in one orientation versus the other. Um, so in one orientation, you can imagine it here. If I imagine flipping this around so that the uh, after it has turned 180 degrees around, then the current at the bottom is now um, flowing um, flowing uh, left to right, and the current at the bottom uh, top is flowing right to left. Then you can see that the, the direction of torque will flip. That's why um, you need a bit of an asymmetry uh, in a practical motor. They have a uh, something called either it's called the alternator or commutator, something that will flip the direction of current as the motor turns so that the net torque is in a consistent direction um, for our world's simplest motor. All we have done is introduce a bit of an asymmetry so that in one orientation, there will be torque and in other orientation, there won't be torque, but the kind of the inertia will carry through and the motor will, as long as the motor receives enough um, integrated torque over a full turn, it'll continue to run as you've seen in the demo. So, so that's the, um, that's the motor. Now, so far, so as you are hearing this description, if you are asking yourself the question, so why didn't we do this earlier? Well, yeah, you're right. We could have done this earlier. And here is why now we are, um, 
here's why we are now uh, talking about motor because if we had talked about motor before this week then there is one aspect that we couldn't fully explain which is this so as you imagine this setup as you imagine this uh, network that's being exerted on the coil of wire um, you might see that um, so you have this torque whenever the wire is in this orientation and um, there's nothing um, kind of limiting. Um, th there's nothing that says as this thing uh, spins faster and faster, torque should be less. And if you, just as if you have a constant acceleration uh, for an unlimited amount of time, you'll have a very, very high velocity. Uh, you could ask the same question. If you have a constant-ish torque, which would uh, lead to constant uh, which angular acceleration in the counterclockwise direction for an unlimited amount of time, one could uh, easily ask the question, um, why doesn't this motor speed up kind of without limit? Why doesn't this motor spin um, really, really fast? And um, uh, and you might say, oh, eventually, you know, the friction and whatnot is going to be too much. Okay, then why not the, the regular motors um, with the uh, uh, frictionless, uh, friction minimized the bearings and all that? Why don't those spin out of control? Um, and I, I guess with the more complicated motors, you could imagine that there's some kind of regulator built in. Uh, well, they don't, um, but what they do have is nature's regulator. There's a secondary effect that will happen as this. Uh, loop of wire spins that's going to uh, that's going to naturally limit how quickly this can spin imagine this uh, loop spinning back and forth between these two orientations i mean you know it's not quite back and forth it's turning 90 degrees each time as it's doing that something is changing with the loop so with the loop in this orientation the magnetic flux here is zero because you can kind of see none of the magnetic fields are going through the loop. When the loop is in this orientation, the magnetic flux, well, it's not zero. It, uh, it's um, magnitude is the, the area of the loop times the magnetic field. So as this loop spins, you have a change of magnetic flux. And as you learned this week, the change of magnetic flux or the time derivative of magnetic flux is associated with this line integral of electric field, which is, I could give this another name, a line integral of electric field is voltage. So this uh, rotation of the loop itself induces a voltage in this coil of wire and and this voltage is always induced in such a way that it opposes this change in magnetic flux so um, this is what your textbook calls back emf i'm trying not to use the word emf so uh, let me call it uh, let me <laughs> what was i trying to call it i tried calling it back voltage for a while and it didn't sound right uh, am I calling it reaction voltage? Um, not real. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, maybe I'll, I should just call it back EMF. That's the terminology your textbook uses. There's an induced voltage in this coil that's going to oppose the voltage that you are applying. So there comes some equilibrium speed where the applied voltage equals the 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 induced voltage that's opposing that applied voltage. And at that point, uh, the whole thing is not going to really draw all that much current. So, so if you imagine a frictionless, uh, perfect coil of wire, a perfect motor that's spinning frictionlessly, then there's a, a kind of an equilibrium speed where the coil won't be drawing any current because the voltage you are applying is precisely opposed by the back EMF. 
Um, or in the case of a more realistic motor, the only amount of power that's needed to be drawn is the same power that's needed for the motor to do mechanical work, either against the friction or against the load that you are imposing. So, and so this portion of this uh, part of the operation of motor is important because this, uh, uh, this uh, makes it so that a free running motor is safe. It has some natural maximum speed that it'll run to that depends on the magnetic field and applied voltage. So the applied voltage acts as a natural regulator. It uh, limits how fast the motor can spin. And at the same time, if you want the motor to spin faster, okay, apply a higher voltage, <laughs> then it'll be able to spin faster. Um, and, and this is again it, why it's uh, dangerous to just to stop the motor. Because if you just uh, stop the motor, then um, then nothing, <laughs> no longer uh, the amount of current that can flow through the coils is no longer limited by something other than uh, resistance of the wire. And if you just uh, want a very low resistance wire connecting one end of battery to the other, that's a short. It can um, it can draw a lot of current, and that's dangerous. So uh, stopping the st simply stopping the motor cold is um, it's not something that you should do. Um, so while the motor is running, it's perfectly safe uh, because this uh, induced voltage will oppose how in, in oppose the applied voltage, limiting how fast it can spin and how much current it eventually draws. So okay, so that's the lecture on electric motor that we really had to hold off until now so that we can discuss the full detail of everything that goes into um, operation of motor.